Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining today's Explore Classroom Hangout. My name is Joe Grabowski from National Geographic, and I will be your host for today. Really excited for today's virtual field trip. We are joining uh, some crew members on board the exploration vessel Nautilus. But before we jump over to meet them, I want to share my screen. I'm going to share National Geographic's MapMaker Interactive, and uh, that is going to show us um, where everybody's joining us from today so we can get a feel for where everyone is. So bear with me for one moment while we do the screen share. All right, that should. There we go. Okay, so you should see my screen now. I'm just gonna pop over and switch to our map. So I am here in Aurora, Ontario in Canada. I'm actually okay. to see my screen now. I'm just gonna pop over and switch. There we go. All right, back to the map. So I'm in Alora, Ontario here in Canada. We have another group joining us in Georgetown. And if we start to back up a little bit more, we can get a feel for some of our other groups. So we've got a group joining us in Pennsylvania, another one in Virginia. We start to move across the US. We can see we've got groups in Wyoming, Utah, Nevada, a couple in California. So an awesome group spread across uh, two countries today. And if we go out a little bit more, let's see if we can find Nautilus. So I've got a rough <laughs> position for them. I don't know exactly where you guys are, but I know you're somewhere around American Samoa. So somewhere out here in the Pacific, uh, no doubt having a great time. So I'm going to come back from that screen share. And while I do that, I want to remind any groups who are tuning in live via YouTube, don't forget you can use the chat sidebar, send us in some questions, let us know where you're watching from. And to any group, whether you're watching live or tuning in via YouTube, um, take some pictures, post them on Twitter, uh, tag at Nagio Education, tag EV Nautilus, uh, and use the hashtag Explore Classroom. So uh, we are joining uh, a team on Dr. Bob Ballard's Exploration Vessel Nautilus. The Nautilus is a 64 meter ship on a mission to explore the never before explored areas of the ocean and seek out new discoveries and share them live from nautiluslive.org. So the ship is currently in the National Marine Sanctuary of American Samoa. And today we're really lucky to be joined by science communication fellow Madison, as well as Georgia, who's a member of the science team on board uh, with the Coral Reef Advisory Group in American Samoa. So it's so great to have you both joining us today. We're really excited to learn a little bit more about what's been going on on the expedition. And I hear you might have some cool images to share with us today too. Yes, we are so excited to share those images and they're actually from one of our recent cruises. Yeah. So um, so we'll get into that, but first do a quick round of introductions and give you a, a, a little bit of a, and a feel for the ship that we're on. So my name is Madison Dapsevich. I am a, a journalist in my shore job and good morning, Talofa. <laughs> That's how you say hello in, in... It is, well done. All right, cool, I did it, yay. <laughs> um, so it's just after 6 a.m. here, American Samoa time. So we're, uh, Georgia is just coming off of her watch and I'm just rolling out of my bunk, so we're ready to rock. Um, so like I said, we're, uh, or as Joe said, we're just outside or inside of American Samoa working in the National Marine Sanctuary of American Samoa. Um, we just pulled a dive a couple of hours ago and we're currently in transit to another location. So we started uh, just on the north side of Tutuila and we're moving to Wailulu. <laughs> Bye, Lulu. Bye, Lulu. Okay. <laughs> um, and Georgia is a member of our science team. She's based here in American Samoa, so she can tell you a little bit more about herself and maybe what we're doing today. Yeah, it sounds good. Thanks, Maddie. I will just say that we are transiting, so if you see us moving, that's because the ship is en route for a nine-hour transit to Bailulu Lulu Seamount. Uh, so as Maddie says, my name is Georgia Coward. I am a coral reef ecologist based here in American Samoa. I work with the Coral Reef Advisory Group, so I'm territorial government, and I am so excited to be on this ship, and I'm having such a good time. I'm very sad that it might come to an end soon. I might stow away my, myself somewhere on this ship. Um, and yes, yeah, so we are on our second leg here in American Samoa, so we're exploring the National Marine Sanctuaries, and we're just finishing up a few dives on the main island of Tutuila, and we are now, as I said, heading nine hours to the east to find the only active seamount within the territory and we will conduct a dive there today. So we are very excited. We did plan this dive last week, but the weather uh, wasn't on our side, but today it is. So we are very excited. It's yes. very early. So uh, yeah, thank you so much <laughs> for having us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm so excited too. 
So this will be an incredible day. Um, unfortunately, we're not diving, so we won't be able to show you what's happening when that dive does occur, but we'll give you all the information um, for how to tune in later this afternoon when we do get down to the bottom. So I am also going to do a quick screen share just to give you all uh, a little rundown on what we're doing here. Joe, maybe you could give me a thumbs up if you're able to see that. Yeah, we gotcha. Cool, all right. So this is our home. This is where we are. This is the Nautilus. Um, it's a ship that was built in 1967 in Germany. Uh, it's about 64 meters in length, which is 211 feet. Uh, it goes anywhere from 10 to 12 knots typically, and we have a crew of 17 members who help run the day-to-day -day operations aboard the ship, make sure we're safe, make sure we're fed, make sure everything is taken care of. Um, and then we have uh, 31 science and operation team members of which Georgia and I are both a part of. So she gave you a bit of a rundown of what she does. I am the science communication fellow here on board. So as I mentioned, my job onshore is a journalist. I'm typically a writer and photographer, um, but here on board, my job is to reach out and talk to people around the world, which has been pretty incredible. It's definitely an honor. Uh, so this is a picture of our multi-beam sonar, so you can see how that works. It's attached to the bottom of Nautilus, and then as we move, we uh, send these the sonar down in order to map the seafloor. So that picks up on different elevations. Um, it shows us what we're working with, and then that's also typically sort of the map um, that previous re researchers or ourselves have done that allow us to get a better idea of what region or area that we're operating in. So we have those maps of Vailulu, right? We've already taken yes, a look so at them. Yes, so we did do them last week. So we know exactly where we want to dive today because of those maps. And then all of these maps are filling in these gaps that we have here. And then, as Maddie says, we can use them in future scientific expeditions uh, to help us. So it's, yeah, it's an amazing tool. So we're very yeah. lucky to uh, fill those gaps in. Yeah. Um, so going into the technology, this is a photo of Hercules. This is our show stopper. So Hercules uh, can descend to a depth of around 4,000 meters. So we've been operating the last couple of days at around 1,000 and then ascending up. So Hercules has um, a bunch of high definition cameras that allows us to see what he's seeing down at the bottom of the ocean. Um, there are also a couple of different bio boxes and a manipulator arm or a grabby arm that are two of them so that they can grab different samples, cut coral, and then move that into those bio boxes that you see right in the front of the screen there um, in order to bring samples up to the surface so our science team can research them, document them, and then put all of that information into a database that scientists around the world can access. So it's very, very cool, very exciting. You can also view that process um, in our wet lab that's streamed online as well. So that's really exciting to, to sort of get a look at how the science goes behind the scenes as well. Um, and then right behind Hercules, you'll see Argus. So Argus can actually descend to a depth of around 6,000 meters, though he typically doesn't go that far down. Um, both of these are tethered to the boat. So we have our boat and then a cable that runs down to Argus. Argus acts as a little bit of a stabilizer there. And then there's another tether that connects Hercules. So we'll see that in just a moment. Um, and that Argus allows us to, our ROV team, to get eyes on Hercules just to see, you know, what sort of terrain Hercules is navigating in. And then also allows, uh, again, that sort of stabilization so that Hercules isn't bouncing all around the, the water column there. So we are talking to you through the beautiful art of telepresence, which is very, very cool and very <laughs> exciting. Um, so you'll see we are in American Samoa, and then uh, that is not on the map, but we showed you the map <laughs> earlier, so pretend like that's American Samoa. <laughs> um, and then we have a satellite uh, up in space, so it, our telepresence here beams up to that satellite down to uh, our inner space center in Rhode Island, which you can see a photo of in that uh, lower right corner there, and then um, sends out to the rest of the world. So it's a really, really cool capability for us to basically share what we're seeing with you as it happens. As it happens, yeah. yeah. Um, so that lower left uh, photo there, that's exactly what I was talking about. So Argus is on top. You can see that tether that goes up to the ship and then that cable that runs down to Hercules, which is in the foreground there. Um, and then that top left corner is where we work. That's our office. Um, so it's a retrofitted two storage units, storage yeah. containers that have been spliced together um, and it has 
all this high-tech equipment. Uh, our science team sits in the back. I sit in that top left corner. And then our ROV team sits in the top right. So we're all connected while we're in the control van with these mic systems that you see here. Uh, and that enables us to talk to each other and then also talk out to the world, much yeah. like we're doing here. Um, and then that there's just a, a closer photo of exactly what I said. So I think we it's have the closest we'll ever get to the NASA space station. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see it's it's uh, very comfortable. We're all very close with one another in there. <laughs> um, it's also air conditioned, so um, we're operating in a in a pretty hot and humid environment here. I think it's averaging around 90 or so degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, so it's warm. Um, so we have special air conditioning in that control van that makes sure that all of the equipment stays nice and cold and doesn't overheat. So this is just a quick look um, at our 2019 expedition map. So we started in Gorda Ridge, uh, just off the coast of California. Nautilus has worked its way down and then west and then down again to American Samoa, which is where we are right now. Um, it's the furthest west and the furthest south that the Nautilus has ever been. So it's been that's exciting. Yeah, again, a real honor to be on this expedition leg and uh, to be a part of sort of this new yeah exploration. New exploration, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, like I said, uh, when if you're ever feeling bored or tired or lonely or you just want to interact with the science and learn more about what we're doing. We are live streaming 24-7 as well and especially when there's a dive going on. So you can head to NautilusLive.org. Um, you'll see mine and George's photos on that currently on duty line there if we're on duty. Um, and then of course you can also field us questions. So you don't have to log in. You could just send questions away. I will be seeing them or one of our other SCS will be seeing them. Uh, and then opens that up to the rest of the control van. So it's a really cool way. Again, you're seeing in real time what we're seeing. So you can ask questions yeah. about things that we're viewing in in that live stream. And then of course, you know, a lot of times we get answers to questions that we have too for new oh, species. Yeah. It's yeah. Great for us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's really exciting to have love people. questions oh yeah love questions. oh yeah and it could be anything like what did you eat for breakfast <laughs> <laughs> or what's your favorite fish so we get all kinds so never be shy ask away um, with that I'm gonna turn it over to our scientist who can talk a little bit more about this cruise and and maybe some of the cool things that we've seen yeah thanks Maddie uh, yeah, so as Maddie sort of gave a rundown of the ship and life on the ship and what we're using equipment wise. Uh, so my role here is as a scientist. So as I said at the beginning, I work in American Samoa, but I normally work in the shallow reefs and use scuba equipment to about 30 meters. So the fact that now I know what's down at 2000 meters is really exciting and it's opened up a whole new world of reef. So I will never look at American Samoa the same. <laughs> and it's also really it's been unexplored. So we have this amazing opportunity with the Nautilus and with OET to come out here and to look at places that no one has ever seen before. So it's very, very exciting. And we're seeing creatures and, you know, different corals that we don't know if that's new to science. or we don't know if people know that that's here. So it provides us with uh, an amazing opportunity to look at the, the life on these reefs. And we've been working, I think our deepest dive was about 2,500 meters. Uh, but recently we've been looking a little bit shallower, uh, about a thousand meters, and then working our way up to the top of some of these, these seamounts, these plateau areas. So I'm going to run through some pictures from uh, the cruise this week and also last week when we are here still in American Samoa and talk a little bit about some of the creatures that we've been seeing. And so the first one is already on the screen. So this was a dive, I think, last week where we started seeing some coral. And there's actually three things on this. So you can see the pink of the coral. And then it's also being taken over by another creature because life can be pretty sparse down there. So it's a bit different to if you go snorkeling or swimming up in the shallows where there's so much happening. Down in the deep, these corals are really searching for something that's stable to settle on in order to grow. So as soon as you see a coral, uh, something else might come and say, hey, that's a great spot. <laughs> so they start taking that over. So they start colonizing that. So the yellow here, this coral, the pink coral has been taken over by a yellow zoanthid. So it's been colonized. And then you can also see in the middle, there's a lovely uh, starfish there, brittle star. So again, that's prime real estate, fantastic habitat. <laughs> and uh, uh, we see that a lot actually. So we always will zoom in with uh, the ROV, the cameras, because there can be so much more on these corals than you would even expect. 
Yep, go for it. <laughs> so this, this is my favorite. Yes, yeah. this was very exciting. I have never seen one of these before. In fact, I didn't know they existed. So this, I don't know if anyone recognizes it or thinks, oh, I think I've seen this on land. It looks similar. So this is a Venus flytrap sea anemone. So you may have seen them on land where it's the plants and they catch the flies. This is basically the counterpart down in the deep sea, this weird and wonderful world that we have. So this is a sea anemone, so it's related to coral, and you can see its tentacles uh, there. And basically, it's closed up right now, but it's waiting for something to come by in the water column, and then it will feed on that. So this was very exciting. Oh. I was... Uh, yeah, pretty, pretty I, excited in that control yes, van. I, it was like my birthday when yeah. I saw it. I was so excited. <laughs> really beautiful. And then sitting on top, uh, again, this provides a prime habitat. So you can see a crinoid on the top there. So um, he's holding out his arms. Again, down there, there's no light. So really, they're relying on the water flow and catching anything they can from the water to eat. So that crinoid is also arms out, ready to catch anything that might float by for breakfast. Okay, so here is another uh, really cool picture. So this shows uh, we've got a coral there in the middle, the pink coral, uh, uh, a pink coral, and then uh, we have that arm that Maddie showed you earlier that's on Hercules. So not only do we have eyes when we're down there by using the cameras on Hercules, we have the ability to take samples from these depths, these crazy depths down in the, the ocean, and bring some of those samples up so that we can look at them and research them and then send them off to scientists so that we start gathering more information about what is the life like down in the deep sea. Uh, and also, it helps us work out if this is a new species or not. So uh, my role in the, the science team is to say, let's stop. I want to take a sample of this. So I'll talk with the pilots. And then they use crazy robot technology to uh, grab this sample for us, and then they'll put that into a bio box. So we have a certain number of boxes uh, on the side of Hercules that we can put samples in. And what we can also do is take requests from scientists that work anywhere in the world, if they're studying the deep sea, uh, whether that's biological, so corals, fish, uh, crabs, or whether they're looking at um, the rocks as well. So rocks can tell us a lot as well about uh, about the environment, we can take requests from them and we can also search for samples for them and use this manipulator arm and then bring them all the way back up to the surface as well. And as Maddie said, once a dive finishes, uh, it's definitely worth looking at the wet lab. So there will be a view of the wet, wet lab that's also live streamed. And uh, it shows you the process that we, we use to take the samples and then store them ready to be sent off uh, back to scientists on the mainland. And we have a few more photos, Joe. I don't know if, if we should keep going or do you want to, when, whenever you're ready to open it up to questions, you could just give us a little thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, why don't we pop through yeah, a couple more? Forever. Okay, okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So here is a close up. So this is another anemone. It's called the pom pom anemone. So uh, again, very, very beautiful. There's lots of weird and wonderful anemones down so there cool. that, uh, you know, I don't see in the shallow waters. So this is just another example of that. And then this here, I believe, is a sea urchin of some kind. Uh, again, a lot of these are new to me. So uh, what we can also do in the back row in the control van is we have ID guides. We can reach out to other scientists. Uh, also, other people watching from Nautilus Live can send us in if they think, oh, I know what that is, or maybe you should look at this. So we can start researching that whilst we're in the control van. If we can find an ID, then we'll also uh, let everyone know that's watching what we think that might be but it doesn't always happen like that. So uh, we will still take photographs and because we've got this video, uh, we're filming it the whole time. And then again, we can send that off to experts in this field. Uh, so this guy here is a sea cucumber. So we refer to them as the vacuums of the ocean. So they <laughs> play a really important role in reefs. Um, so they're feeding on everything on the bottom and then basically pooping it out <laughs> to help create sand. Uh, so really important for the reefs. And again, they're always very weird and wonderful colors and shapes and, and uh, always fun for us to see. And so this one was something that I came across in a dive. We were diving, I think, last week. And uh, we stopped because we weren't sure what it was. And we're still not sure really what, <laughs> yeah. what it is, but it looks like a molt from a crustacean. 
So again, we took these photographs and then we can ID them uh, as soon as possible. So this is another anemone. So we see a lot of these. Uh, again, they're using those tentacles to catch what they can from the water column for food. And here, I believe this might be the last picture. I'm not oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is a sponge. So we see sponges of all shapes, sizes, patterns, colors uh, <laughs> down there. So uh, we have great fun looking for these and then thinking, what, do they, what shape do they look like? So this one's baseball shaped. And uh, so, yeah, we take samples of these as well so we can work out what species these are. And uh, yeah, always fun for us to see on a dive. Is this a glass sponge too? I think so. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we're seeing a lot of these. Cool. Um, and again, they have all these pores on them and they're using the water. They filter the water straight through them. And I just learned food. that glass sponges actually produce glass. So they have little pokey things on them. And if you touch them, it actually can like poke you like glass does. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not, well, luckily we won't be that deep. <laughs> <Yeah>. so. <laughs> so watch out. <laughs> and then, uh, so this is just some uh, coral that we've seen on a rocky ledge. So again, as I said, this is the perfect substrate. It's nice and hard. They can attach onto this, um, and that's why there's so much life on this one uh, rocky outcrop. So all of that that you see there is is coral, deep sea coral. So related to what I work on in the shallow water. Okay, these pictures keep on I coming. <laughs> well, I, well, why don't we? We saw the, this one. Yeah. Why don't we meet this guy and then we'll jump to some Q and A with our questions? Okay. Our all right. <laughs> Uh, so this is a great. I haven't actually seen this picture before. So this is um, this is a fantastic picture. So the one thing that I'm not sure if was mentioned, but you know, Hercules is a pretty big object. It's got all these lights on it and it's pretty noisy because it's got to be powered through the water. So when we get to see fish or sharks or rays, that's a really exciting thing for us because sometimes that noise might scare off some of these fish. So they can move very quickly, whereas the sponges and the corals, they're not going anywhere. So every time we get a great shot like this of a fish, uh, that's fantastic. And again, we work with scientists to ID these uh, to work out their range and what species this is. So I'll stop because I could talk forever about, <laughs> <laughs> about everything. And uh, I guess we'll hand it over to Joe. All right, very cool. Well, it's good to be passionate. And I think that shines through when you're talking about the work <laughs> that you're seeing down at the bottom. So that's really, that's awesome. Uh, and it looks like you've been seeing some amazing things. So. Um, I hope the weather's been cooperating as well and you've been able to do a lot of dives. Um, we're gonna meet some of our classrooms, but before we do, I wanna give a quick shout out because I know we have some groups who are tuning in via YouTube. Don't forget, you can get in on the action, use the chat sidebar on the right, let us know where you're watching from and send in some questions. And it looks like we have some 10th graders in Peru who are joining us, which is really cool. So don't forget wow. to send in some Hi, questions. Guys. And there's another group, Bright Horizons is joining us. So I'm gonna steal a question from them right away because they have one up here already. And they're wondering, the multi-beam sonar, is that able to show shipwrecks on the bottom? I believe so. I think you'd be better equipped maybe to answer that. Yes, <laughs> uh, it can. And we also have another mapping um, technology on board right now that we're using, which can look even shallower. So it's called ASV mapping, and that definitely can find shipwrecks. So uh, they can get some really great results from that. So yes, uh, we have software right now, technology right now, that can help us help and that, us with that. Yeah, and actually, um, two weeks ago, we were actually, right before you came on board, we were searching for the Samoan Clipper, which is um, an aircraft that disappeared in 1938. And we, and science believes that it went down um, in this area. So we were actually using side scan sonar survey as well to um, survey the area at a depth of around 3,200 meters. So it was pretty deep um, and we were looking for that aircraft. So there are uh, multiple varieties and ways in order to use different sorts of technologies to find shipwrecks. All right, very cool. Well, let's meet our first live classroom. So uh, we're gonna go to Virginia first. We have uh, some students at the Pineapple Haven Child Development Program with Mrs. Ford. Let me get their microphone turned. Actually, Mrs. Ford, you'll have to turn it on for me. And then a big hi from your group, and then you can go ahead with the question. Oh, I can see looking for the mute. <laughs> no, yeah, okay. This oh, there it is. Hi. Hey, everyone, how you doing? Hello. Hi. Oh, my gosh. What an amazing job you guys have. I think I'm in the wrong <laughs> 
and to be so beautiful and look so young, I would be scared and probably <laughs> We're in Virginia. Uh, of course, my big question is, because I know astronauts have to have special food, but what do you guys eat at the, so many leagues under the sea? Yeah, well, we are so lucky. Um, we have an amazing crew that cooks amazing food. Oh, it's, we are very well fed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we basically get a buffet <laughs> for every meal. Um, and there's a variety of pretty much every different sort of cuisine you might want. So it can range from pizza to raviolis to salad to shrimp tacos. Um, on Sundays, we get ice cream. Yes, yes. That's such a treat. Oh, and we have a snack every day at 2.30. So yesterday, it was cookies. <laughs> we're so, very spoiled. Yeah, we're really spoiled. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so my group has maybe one question from the group, and then I'll move on, if I may. Yeah, go for it. Okay. okay um, my question is, what what colors do the um, sea cucumbers come to? Like, are they, what color are the sea cucumbers? Yep. Is that what, what is that there? Oh, oh perfect. Okay. okay, cool. Let's see. I think they come in all different colors and shapes and sizes. Yeah, we see a lot of purple, purple sea cucumbers. Sometimes we see some that are translucent. So actually you can only just see you just see their guts inside. So uh, that's actually very hard for the camera because the camera struggles to focus on anything. So and then we see them all different. Some have spikes and some are, you know, long. So all different shapes, sizes, and colors. All right, very cool. We're gonna jump and meet another one of our groups. Um, let's see, this time we're gonna go to Georgetown, Ontario. It's actually not too far from where I'm sitting right now. Uh, they're a homeschool group. Let me get their microphone turned on for them. There it is. How are we doing, Georgetown? Good. Morning. Morning. All right, who's got a question? What's the biggest ship um, wreck that you found? Ooh, that is a good question. I know that there was quite a bit of work done um, in the Mediterranean a few years ago looking for shipwrecks and marine archaeology. Um, I'm not sure what the largest shipwreck was, but I will say there was this amazing photo, um, and you can find it as well, I believe, on our highlight reel um, and at nautiluslive.org in one of the photo galleries of some pottery that was found. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, so it wasn't just one or two, you know, ancient bases. It was, like, at least 100. And it's incredible. And so they're piled on top of one another, um, and the photos are really, really cool. So you can actually see you know, the difference of what the camera sees when it's looking at something on the bottom of the ocean and then what the sonar sees as well. So I would highly recommend heading and checking that out. Uh, there are also, I believe, some photos of, of um, some various Navy ships that Nautilus has explored and then also um, aircrafts and, and shipwrecks and that sort of thing. So check it out. It's a great opportunity for you to explore what, we're, what we've previously explored as yeah. well online. <laughs> All right. Very cool. Thank you, Georgetown. Uh, let's see, let's go to our group in Utah now. Um, they are from ABC Great Beginnings. Let me get their microphone turned on for them. There it is. How are we doing, Utah? Doing good. <laughs> oh, can you try that again, bud? It got cut off a little bit. How does coral, coral die? Oh, How does coral fly? Fly. That's I a good question. Said, I think he said die. How does coral die? Oh, die. How does coral That's die? also a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I'll answer that one. How does yeah. coral die? Uh, there's lots of different ways. So the first thing I'll say is that coral grows very, very slowly. So a lot of coral might grow this much in a year. So up in the shallow, they're using sunlight to help them uh, get energy. And that, that in turn helps them grow. But like I said, down when it's 2,000 meters, they're relying on what they can catch themselves to eat. And then uh, they need to have, as I said again, they need to have that hard substrate in order to attach in the first place. So yesterday we were diving in an area that was all loose rubble and rocks. Uh, and then we actually saw some coral that was, uh, was dead there. And that's probably what happened is that the rubble has moved. So it's been squashed. 
um, and uh, the tissue on the coral has been uh, damaged. So unfortunately, it can't repair. It's you know very grows very very slowly. It could also die uh, if something else came to to try and eat it, or um, if there's too much weight on it and it breaks down and it can't reattach and it's just loose then uh, on the bottom. So they're very fragile, um, very sensitive uh, organisms. And shallow water coral also has different sort of threats to it as well, yes, right? Yes, yes. Okay. So they're more vulnerable to the threats, um, you know, people walking on them or if the water is getting too hot, if storms come through and break them. So sort of more man-made threats as well up in the shallows. All right, so I've just watched as the sun has risen behind you. It went from darkness, and oh, I went oh, to the ocean <laughs> when the ship rocked. So, uh, keep an eye out in those classrooms, and you can get some views of the ocean as the ship is moving uh, on its transit. So we're going to join a boys and girls club now. They are in Rollins, uh, Wyoming. Let me see if I can get their microphone turned on for them. There it is. How are you, Wyoming? Say hi. Hi. All right, who's got a question for us? Great, go ahead. Um, how many dives do you do every day? That is also a very good question, and that can vary. So um, as we mentioned, there's a lot of sort of variables that go into determining how we dive. So if the weather is too bad, if the ocean is too swelly or the currents are too rough, um, we can't dive. So it's a little bit of planning and a lot of bit of hoping for the best <laughs> in terms of those weather windows. Um, yesterday we did a 10 hour dive. So we went down at about 8 a.m. Yeah, 8 a.m. Oh wait, no. 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, pulled up at 4 a.m., so not too long, just a couple of hours ago, our time. Um, when we were looking for the Samoan Clipper, we set a new record with Argus. We were actually diving for 125 hours. So it really depends on sort of what we're looking for, what the work is, and what the weather's doing. Yeah, and we're also planning a dive this afternoon at 2 p.m. local time, so American Samoa time. So please come on to Nautilus Live yes. and send us your questions and watch uh, as we discover uh, by Lulu Seamount. Yes, absolutely. All right, very cool. Let's grab another classroom. Let's fire up their microphone. Oakley, California. We have some fifth graders with Mrs. Whitmere. Let me see if I can get their microphone turned on. There it is. Hello. How are we doing, fifth graders? Hello. Hey. Um, my, my question is, is how long have you been on the ship? Yeah, so um, I have been on the ship about two weeks now, um, two and a half weeks, and we'll be on the ship for another week. So in all, my leg will be three weeks, and you? I've been on just over a week now, and then uh, I finished at the same time as Maddie, so we have about a week a week left. Yeah, and that time varies too, depending on the expedition, depending on the crew member or the yes. science team member. So some people will come on for you know a shorter chunk, just like maybe five days or so. Some people will stay on for three months or more. So it really depends on, on the expedition and what their role is and and everything else that goes into operating a ship at sea. All right, great question. Uh, shift gears, let's go to State Library's Marine Biology class in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, hanging out with Mr. Fee. Uh, let me get their microphone turned on. You're traveling the country today. I know, <laughs> wow, what a tour. How are you doing, Pennsylvania? Don't go. Uh, all right. Do you guys ever take pictures of sharks? I spit. We do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yesterday, I believe your watch spotted the first shark. Yes. It was very, very exciting. Very exciting. <laughs> and that was deep as well. I think about 600 meters we spotted a, a shark. Yes. Yeah. So, what is that about? 1800 feet or so a little bit more 20 2000 feet so really really deep half like almost half a mile or so um and then i came on right afterwards and we were a little bit shallower so around 130 meters and there we saw so many sharks <laughs> it was incredible um we a saw lot. yeah we saw reef sharks and silver tip sharks um and then we we're also so there's a lot more light once you get closer to the surface because um 
it's closer to the sun, obviously. And so there, we have more life going on because of that light. It's really, really exciting. So we ended up seeing a ton of reef fish, yeah. uh, different species of coral at that point. We also saw some dog tooth tuna. tuna. Yep. Um, yeah, it was really, really exciting. Yeah. Trevally, sharks, all kinds of things. And so while you're looking at this, this live feed that happens at nautiluslive.org, uh, we also have members of our science team on that back row who are snapping photos. So they're taking pictures of everything that we see. Um, so the ones that Georgia showed you were from our dive two days ago. Um, and so that enables us to both refer back to the video, uh, to have that live stream, and then to look at all those photos as well. So we'll probably have those live here not in not too long. Yeah. <laughs> And you'll hear us too if you're watching through nautiluslive.org. If we see a shark, you'll hear us get very, very excited. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So just for the classrooms uh, or for the students who might want to tune in live today. So um, I believe right now it's just after 6 in the morning for you. Is it 640? Yep. All right. So when yeah, you're yeah. diving with two today... <laughs> It should be 8 o'clock tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern is when the dive is going to start. So if you're at home um, and you want to check it out at nautiluslive.org, you can watch some of the dive live maybe with your parents. That would be really cool to be able to share that with them. Uh, California, one more time, grade fives with Mrs. Uh, Habo. And let me get your microphone turned on. There it is. How are we doing, grade fives? Say hi. Hi. Okay, Brianna, do you want to ask? Uh, what is the weirdest thing you have discovered? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we have a lot to choose from. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think um, one of the, the most fun ones that happened a couple of years ago was the googly-eyed squid. Oh. Yeah, and that we actually, I'm looking at a photo of the, <laughs> two photos of the googly-eyed squid right now on our wall. So um, it was a favorite among researchers and it was a favorite for the world too. People loved it because it was, um, again, I encourage you to check it out in your own time with your parents or your teachers. Uh, it was this, it almost looked like a cartoon. It was yeah. the cutest little thing. <laughs> um, it's like little purple squid with these bright, you know, googly eyes. So it was really, really hilarious. And I think it was a novel find. Um, but we, we find all kinds of stuff all the time. Uh, last year, the gulper eel, I think, was some of the cooler yep. footage that I've seen. So that's an eel um, that actually takes in a bunch of water and then gets really, really big when it's feeling threatened. And so it looks like a balloon is inflating. And then uh, it's, you know, kind of mysterious. And then when it's done, it spurts it all out and dashes away. So it's it, that was a really cool video, too. I remember seeing that. And I oh. always love the uh, anglerfish, too. They're yes. always very exciting to see. Oh, my goodness. Very yeah. we weird and wonderful. The deep sea has a lot of weird and wonderful <laughs> creatures. <laughs> Definitely. All right. Well, I'm going to squeeze in a question from YouTube from our group who's joining us in Peru. And they're wondering what um, a highlight's been for you from this particular expedition. Do each of you have a highlight, something that you're going to take away that really stuck out? Uh, there's so many to choose from. Yeah. Uh, I think seeing that shark yesterday, that was the first shark I'd seen and we were deep and we were looking at a coral and then out of nowhere, this shark came right up to Hercules and checked us out and then off he went. So that probably was a pretty big highlight for me. Yeah. Yeah. It was really, really cool to see um, all of the sharks in the life yesterday. I'm going to throw a curveball and say the people have been a highlight oh. for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, because... The Nautilus is so unique. It brings on people from all different backgrounds. So you can be a scientist, but you can also be kind of anything. So we yep. have artists on board who are able to do, you know, illustrations. I'm a writer um, and here I am writing and, and talking to you all. So the, I think the coolest thing about Nautilus is the, the many different people that it brings on board coming from all different backgrounds. Yep. Um, and it's such a cool way to learn from so many different yeah. perspectives. Right. And, and so a lot of internships available too. So if you want to look at, you know, being an ROV pilot or working in mapping and a lot of opportunities. And yeah, all, I think all you have to do is be excited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Excellent. Well, these events always go way too fast. It always seems like we hit start on the broadcast and then it's, it's time to be oh wrapping up. Oh my gosh, it's already done. I know. <laughs> I, yeah. I want to give a huge shout out to our classrooms uh, and organizations that joined us today across Canada. 
uh, and the US. Your questions, as always, were amazing. And maybe, uh, Maddie and Georgia, can you just remind them, if they want to send in some more questions, how can they do that? Yeah, so head to nautiluslive.org, um, and you'll see the live stream right there on the home page. And then if you scroll just below the video, there's a little bar that you can uh, send in all of your questions. So whatever they may be, like I said, it, you could ask us what we had for breakfast or what our favorite sea creature is, or you could get more technical if you'd like. <laughs> All right. Well, I am looking forward to tuning in tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern to see some of the live dive. I hope some of the, the students joining in today go home and watch with their parents and send in some questions. Um, and I want to give a huge thank, uh, thanks and shout out to both of you for getting up early, 6 in the morning for us, and uh, <laughs> hanging out with our, our students across the country. That's been great. Yeah, it was our treat. Thank yeah. you for having us. Thank you. All right. Well, the last thing I'll do to wrap up today is I'm going to turn on all the microphones in our classrooms. If you guys want to get nice and loud, a huge goodbye and thank you for the thank you. Thank you. Here we go. All right. Excellent job, as always. Thank you, everyone, for joining today. Thank you, Nada. And we look forward to our next video. Thanks, everyone. That was awesome. <laughs>